It's the dog days of summer. But in a month that is typically quite eventless, some very interesting trends are starting to emerge. National housing stars, for one, are up by double digits on a seasonally adjusted basis. Market activity, essentially flat, but it comes at a time of year when it should actually be falling. And with everything that's currently happening politically, socially, and economically, the best advice that I can give you is get the popcorn out because the next few months are gonna be very interesting. Hello friends and welcome to the August 2024 edition of our Greater Vancouver Market Update. If you're looking for the straight goods, the no BS analysis of the housing market here in Greater Vancouver, you have come to the right place. As always, if you find this content valuable, mildly interesting, or if you've just felt sorry for me because of my career choice over the last few months, Please engage with this video by clicking the like button, drop me a comment down below and make sure to hit subscribe down there so that you don't miss out on any future episodes. Let's see how Google likes it when we manipulate the algorithm for once. I'm only half kidding. Love you, Google. Please don't shadow ban me. All right, let's get into the stats by taking a look at the sales figures for the month that was with July sales coming in at 2,333 total transactions throughout the board. This is only a 3.5% drop month over month from June. To be honest with you, it's a stronger number than I was anticipating. Sales in July typically begin to fall off a cliff as most buyers are off enjoying the summer. So a very modest drop like this is actually a pretty encouraging sign in my mind. However, looking at this from a historical perspective, July sales were still 17.6% below the 10 year average for the month. But that number is dropping. The previous month, we were 24% below the 10-year average, so perhaps things are starting to move in the right direction. Listings, although they rose slightly, also remained basically flat, coming in at 14,326, representing a mere 1% increase over the previous month. Now, the fact that listings haven't shot up is far less surprising than the fact that sales have more or less held up in July. Settlers are typically reluctant to list during the summer. It's hot out. Many homes are uncomfortably warm, especially condos. And the market is typically slow because buyers have other priorities on their minds. But with sales and listings continuing to move in opposite directions, albeit very modestly, our months of inventory has risen slightly to 6.1 MOI, finally breaking that coveted threshold of 6 which many consider a full-blown buyer's market. Remember, anything over six months of inventory is widely considered buyer's market territory. And a buyer's market means, well, downward pressure on prices. And the GVR home price index for July, as a result, fell for a second consecutive month to 1.197 million, which represents a 0.6% drop from June. So a cresting on the price graph has begun to emerge. But as you can see on your screen, there have been several of these humps over the last 24 months. And there are certainly indicators that would make one question how long of a runway this current trend has. For more commentary on that, please check out our editorial segment called Boots on the Ground in the next few days on our various social feeds. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you know how this goes. That section of the update starts now. These boots are made for walking, and that's just what they'll do. As mentioned in the intro to the stats portion of this update, I truly think that the next few months will be some of the most fascinating of my 14 year career in this business. Ever since the Bank of Canada started hiking rates back in 2022 in an effort to curb inflation and slow the economy, the buzz phrase that we have all been hearing is soft landing. Well, by lowering rates in back-to-back -back months in June and July of this year, the Bank of Canada has effectively just put on the seatbelt sign on this flight. We have now officially begun our final descent and we're about to find out if Tiff Macklem and his governing council at the central bank can bring us home in one piece. Since the beginning of this process, Mr. Macklem has been steadfast in his messaging. Number one, that there will be pain, that this economic period will not be pleasant for many Canadians. Well, he's one for one there so far because he hit that one right out of the park. Number two, that the Bank of Canada will be extremely patient before making the decision to start cutting rates. Hmm, that's an interesting one. 
Because although most people had thought that a rate cut or two were in the cards for this year, many were surprised, including myself, that the first one came as early as it did in June rather than in the fall. And number three, that when rates do begin to come down, the Bank of Canada will do it slowly and carefully so that inflation doesn't rear its ugly head again. But all of a sudden, we've had two back-to-back -back rate cuts, which in many ways came earlier than expected, especially since the Fed in the U.S. has been reluctant to lower rates at all to this point. Which brings me to the topic of September the 4th, a.k.a. Judgment Day. Yes, this is the date of the next scheduled interest rate announcement by the Bank of Canada. And now, all of a sudden, most pundits are leaning towards us seeing yet another interest rate drop. But I'm very much on the fence about calling this one. I didn't think that the one in June would happen so soon, but when it did, I immediately predicted that we would see another one in July. My theory was that if they pulled the brakes that early, it means that they were probably seeing troubling trends in the economy that they weren't expecting so early, and they needed to pull the nose of the plane up very hard. But three in a row? I tend to think that they may want to sit back and see what effect these last two rate reductions have had on the economy. There are two more scheduled rate announcements this year, one on October the 23rd and one on December the 11th. And no matter what happens in September, I do think that we will see at least one more rate drop this year and maybe even two. So what effect has this sudden downward trend in rates had on the market? Well. After a very lackluster spring, where as I mentioned in last month's update, we were sitting on the highest number of listings we've ever had at one time, we ended up moving five properties in four weeks since that July drop. So yeah, there's definitely been some sentiment that we have finally bottomed out and that we're about to reverse course back in an upward direction. And if Christmas comes early and if we do see another rate drop in September, I think we're gonna be in for a very busy fall market. All right, that's it for me for this month. I hope you and your families enjoy the last few weeks of summer and I'll catch you right back here in about a month's time. Take care, everyone.